Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back once again. Uh, today, I want to throw another warning out there about, I know I just did a video on this, but this is the second one that's come in. Uh, you can see I'm flustered about it. This is another warning video to not use aftermarket phasers on the 543 valve, okay? Don't ever, ever, ever use them. Now, what's happening with this truck behind me is this customer, he's a retired mechanic, he watched my video series on how to do the full-timing job in a 543 valve. He bought this kit, this full-timing kit from Freedom Racing, which I'm calling off Freedom Racing right now. This kit that you're selling is garbage, okay? And the problem is they're hodgepodging a couple different parts together to make a kit that seems more cost-effective than the one that I'm linking to on Amazon, which is all Ford components. Now what they're doing here is they're giving you the option they're giving you the option to use the Ford phasers, the Ford tensioners, chains, all that good stuff. And when you go to order it, they're gonna, it's gonna get upcharged to buy those pieces. Otherwise, it comes with these junk aftermarket phasers. And it's the second set that's come in to my shop from long distance away because the customer put in this kit that they talked to Freedom Racing and they said, these these ADP CNC uh, phasers are actually more reliable than the Ford phasers. We're seeing less problems with these compared to the Ford phasers. Now believe me, I, I'm not gonna toot my own horn here, but guess what? Right now with these being out of warranty, I probably install more timing kits than any other technician in the country. I do so many of these a year. It's probably over 100 a year. I'm, I'm doing about three, four a week right, right now during the summer. A week, I'm doing full timing kits on these vehicles. I know them very, very well. I only use all four components except for the million oil pump, and I have zero problems. So I'm gonna know, because my customer will be on the phone, hey, I just spent 2300 at your place, and the phaser's coming apart. Hey, the phaser's knocking. I'm gonna know if there's a problem with the phasers that I'm putting in, and I only put in the Ford phasers. So for them to say these, these ADP CNC phasers are more reliable than the Ford ones, at a fraction of the cost, it's just, it just blows my freaking mind. Now what's happening with this one, like I was saying, is that a, a retired mechanic followed my series, he called them up, they said use these other ones instead of the Ford ones, we'll save you some money. They sent them out to him, he put the whole kit in, followed my series and videos, and guess what? He got it started up, and it has all kinds of issues, it barely runs, and when he drove it down to me thinking, hey, I just missed a coil or something like that, there's no way I mistimed it. It's a colored link system. When you time these engines, my video on how to do this is very clear. It just can't be. I'm a retired mechanic. How can this be? I said, what kind of phasers did you use? Were they aftermarket? Yeah, they said, blah, 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 Freedom Racing. Use these aftermarket ones. I said, I already know right now the phaser has phased and got stuck there, or it's moving when it shouldn't be. In this case... I knew because the whole bank was missing, the bank one, one, two, three, and four, I could see in the power balance was had misfires, and then you go look at the timing error PID for bank one, and you start it up, it goes from zero, way over here, okay, it just stays there, it doesn't go all over the place, whereas the other side, it's holding, okay. I already knew right then and there he had a timing issue and it was the, the components, the new components he put on. He, he spent $900, spent two, three days doing this, and he made his vehicle less reliable. That's the key here. The four components may make a little knocking noise and whatever, but believe me, they're not gonna come apart, okay? They're not gonna start phasing on their own and getting stuck there. They're not gonna, the pins aren't gonna shear on them, not the service parts. The original factory parts, yes, had a problem with pins shear, shearing and, and all kinds of issues like that. The, the, fact, the, the service parts for these, these, these phasers from Ford do not have issues. They've gone to about three revisions and they're, they're at the point where they know what they're doing and they're good to go. You want to use the Ford phasers. Now I just pulled the valve covers off of here and sure enough, as I just, I just told the guy who came in, guess what? You just spent $800, but now I'm going to charge you $1,750. It's like $1,250 for the labor and then two Ford phasers at my cost I'm selling them for, 250 each, $500 total, is about $1,750. So he spent the $900, plus he now he's paying me to install the correct Ford phasers so he doesn't have problems and he can get his truck back. 
So I put, just pulled the valve covers off and sure enough, this bank, you'll see the whole, the whole uh, secondary part of the phaser has phased and it's stuck there. That's the part with the tone ring the trigger wheel on the front that actually locks into the cam and moves. And that's what the cam sensors read and it tells how far advanced or retarded the timing is, okay? So that's part that's actually moving with a sprocket on there that doesn't move, it's just, it's chained, it's linked to the chain and that's it, the innards parts actually move, okay? So sure enough, I pull out the valve cover on here and it, it's stuck, it's stuck, it's falling apart, the phaser's falling apart. You can see I'm aggravated here. So enough yakking, let's go over to the vehicle, I'll show you right here, I just pulled the valve covers off, you'll see it, it's coming apart and maybe I'll prop up the camera also. Once I loosen the chain on there and I start pulling stuff apart, you may see it relax back to that locked position. Yeah. It's a really poor, poor product. So let's go over the engine. I'll show you how it's coming apart on there. Brand new phaser, made about 30 miles, and it has this issue, made the vehicle less reliable. All right, so let's take a look at the engine real quick. I'll show you. You can see all the new timing components, the phaser, the chains, guides, all down in there, VCT solenoids, both sides, okay? Now, the reason why I didn't pull the front cover yet is because I don't want to disturb anything anymore than I already did because I don't want that phaser that's failed. You can see it's failed right now. I don't want it moving back to that lock position before I catch it on film. Now, what's happening here, this is the Ford phaser right here, is that the way these work is that the sprocket is splined to the chains, as you can see there. That doesn't change. But the center part of it that actually attaches to the camshaft can move independently of the sprocket itself. And that, that, that's controlled by oil flow to change it and advance or retard it. Now, once that oil flow goes away, there's a big old spring on here. You can see right here, it's really tight. It's a really strong spring. It's gonna bring it back and it's gonna lock it into that base timing position, okay? There's a little locking pin in there. Brings it back automatically as a fail safe, okay? These ones obviously are not doing that. Once it moved off that base idle position, it's not locking back in. Therefore, the timing is wherever it wants to be on that bank. And when you come back down to idle, the timing is off. The timing is literally off on that bank. So look at this one right here. This is the way you tell. There's three triggers right here for the left-hand side. See that? How this is lined up perfectly with this tooth? Get you in there, right? and it's covering the L, that's the way it should be in a locked position. Whenever the engine's off, it should be in that position. That's fully locked until it gets oil flow from the VCT solenoids once again after about 900 RPM, okay? So it should look just like this. Now, let's take a look at this one right here. You see the L right there? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit off. Now, it should, be, it should be lined up with that one right there, that one right there, that center one, should be lined up with the L. Look how far off that is. That's way off. You see it right there? And that's the way you tell. This one's literally stuck in a phased position instead of locking back in. Now, the other issue I have with these, the last customer came in, same garbage phasers, is he actually had an issue where they would just kind of be all over the place while they're being actuated. And therefore, he had a 30, uh, PO340, 344, and 345, 349. He had timing error codes that weren't there after the fact, okay? It was getting an intermittent or inconsistent cam signal because the phaser was just doing whatever it freaking wanted, okay? Same brand. And you know what that brand is? That's the brand right there. Now, I'm all for aftermarket, okay? I'm all for aftermarket. You save some money, you get new parts in your vehicle, but for whatever reason, not even Dorman, a big company like Dorman, can get these freaking phasers right. No one can get these right besides Ford, okay? That's it, the Ford ones do not come apart like that. They will lock back in after 100,000 miles or so. They might have that little knocking noise from that little locking pin inside of there. That's it. These do not come apart. These ones will come out of the box brand new and come apart. You see that? 
Now, tell me, would this not aggravate the heck out of you if you just spent all that money in the summer heat working on this stuff and then you have these new issues afterwards with new components on here. And good luck getting your money back too. So I hope this really drives it home. This is the second one in a span of a week and a half here that they got duped by Freedom Racing and those cheap ones, those cheap phasers, that brand right there. And we're having these issues and the customers are coming in spending $1,700 for me to fix it and fix it right with the Ford phasers. And there you have it. You saw once I started pulling these cam caps off of here, releasing the tension on there, went to go bump that last cap to get it unwedged in there. This thing all of a sudden came back on its own, moving on its own to that lock position and started squirting oil out the passageway here in the cam. Um, as it was returning back to that lock position. That proves it right there. These things are coming apart, doing anything they want instead of doing what is commanded by the PCM. And when they're not commanded by the PCM, they are not locking back in like they should. Right there, proof positive. All right, so that's about it. That's enough ranting and raving. I need to get back to this one. I need to get in there, put the four phasers in, time it again, and do it right for this customer so you can get back on the road and get back home. The, the point is this should have never happened in the first place and Freedom Racing should be telling people, shouldn't be telling people lies like this that these phasers are more reliable than the Ford ones. Not one thing on the market is more reliable than the Ford phasers, I'm telling you that right now. I will not use anything but the Ford timing components and neither should you, okay? You use any aftermarket components on there, you're really playing with fire, I'm telling you. Not just this company, not just Freedom Racing. It's any aftermarket company. But the fact that they're pushing them on customers, which are now my customers, coming to me with these problems is aggravating me. And it, now they're, you know, they're spending a lot of extra money they shouldn't have to, and they're having a lot of aggravation that they shouldn't have to, and they're, they're, they're flat out lying to them. I need to get back to it. I'll see you guys next time.